light just pulling into the shop this morning. There's a 56 Ford in the hoist that I racked last night. A big box of unopened goodies. Should be a disc brake conversion kit and a power booster setup. So we're gonna get inside, open that box, see what we have to work with, and put disc brakes on. All right, so here's the 56. Sitting on the hoist, here's our box of goodies. We'll open that and see what we have to work with. Alright, so the customer did buy this kit. I had no idea what I was in store for upon opening it. It is a classic performance products kit. It appears to have everything we need here. Um, new bearings, new races. We'll have to change the races that are currently in the rotors. Um, the booster setup looks really nice. Uh, nicely made. Nice linkages. All the hardware is here. It does have a proportioning valve on it already on the bottom. Um, we have our spindle adapters for the rear bearings and seals. Our caliper brackets and all the hardware we need. New castle nuts, spacers. We even have a bleeder kit. So let's move to the front of the truck. We'll get the tires off, get the old drum brakes off, uh, unhook the brake lines, clean everything up, and start installing this kit. Now this is the part you might not be able to do at home in the garage. The kit says you need a number three bit for a quarter inch tap. Install the caliper bracket, which I actually do have on backwards in this picture, um, but I was just using it to locate where I wanted my grease circ. You actually have to use a number three bit, drill a hole on the back side where the grease circ will clear the caliper bracket, tap it, and relocate it there. And then they provide you with a plug to fill the old hole. However, it is kind of hard to drill through it. They tell you to keep drilling until the drill bit kisses the kingpin because you won't be able to drill through the kingpin. It's hardened. But it is kind of hard to drill that hole, especially through the actual bushing. I actually switched out to a quarter, uh, not a quarter inch, an eighth inch end mill when I got to the bushing and used an end mill to grind through it down to the actual kingpin surface. It could be kind of hard to get through the bushing, and that's the one thing you might have a problem with if you don't have the right tools to do it. So my caliper brackets are on. My grease circ has been relocated to the back side of the spindle. And the original hole is plugged with the provided Allen set screw. All right, so here's the deal. Both sides of the truck, when I put the bearing adapter on, they really spin freely. And it should almost be a press fit. 
Now upon reading the instructions it does say that if they spin on the axle shaft you can put a small amount of red Loctite inside to lock that. I don't like that idea. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the torch out, heat the ring just a little bit, squelch it, and it should tighten that ring up so it's more of a press fit. And also we'll red Loctite it as well after it's shrunk a little bit. So I did go back and heat that a second time, but check out the results. Now, now, it's tightened up. So now I can have a nice press fit. I'll buff my bearing surface and seal surface a little bit after I install it on the spindle. And now we have a nice tight lock on that spindle. much better. So I'll get the other side done and change the races and the rotors. Hmm. Well, I don't think we'll need the spacer. Alright, so for whatever reason I didn't need the spacers for between the nut and the washer on the end of the spindle, so we're gonna leave those out. Bearings are packed. Time to preload the bearings and put our calipers on. Well, other than the fact that I had to tighten up the bearing adapters on the spindles, which really wasn't any big deal, the front end went together really nice. It was a nice kit to put on. It went really smooth. The brake lines were nice. Unfortunately, I just ran into a problem. So I just removed the old master cylinder from the truck and was getting ready to put the new unit on there. Unfortunately, this is the wrong year. Now, I did go on their website look up a 56 Ford F100 and this is the kit they have listed for this truck. Well after about an hour on the phone with their tech line we figured out that this is actually for a 48 to 52. It's actually listed wrong on the website and this is the incorrect bracket. So what we're gonna do is cut it apart, modify it and make this one work. So here's the truck with the old master cylinder removed. Let me grab the booster and I'll show you guys what's wrong with it. So like I said, we figured out this is for a 48 to 52. And if you actually look up here at the linkage, it is way off to the left, to the right side, I'm sorry. 
this actually needs to go in here. So we're quite a ways off. We'll have to modify. Well, here it is, all said and done. Brakes are bled, everything's hooked up. Linkage works really well that I made for it. I can't give a review on this particular kit, seeing that it wasn't the right one in the first place, but after a little modification, it seems to work pretty well, so nothing left to do but take a test drive. Locks the tires up fairly easy. It did just rain out though. Well, I'm pretty happy with the brake installation. The truck stops great, it's a huge improvement. I guess other than the fact that we had some wrong parts there and I had to make some stuff, everything worked out really well. Alright, so the disc brake kit worked out really well on the 56. The front stuff went together nice. We had the wrong master cylinder. We had to make some stuff. Not a big deal. It works really great. The truck is left. The customer is super happy with it. Here in the shop, I got the floor pans going in my tea bucket I got videos coming up that, of that shortly. We're gonna start building that intake for that supercharger probably late next week for, for the Iron Duke. Um, I also got a 51 Chevy in here I've been cranking on. I got the floor pans going in that. I got videos of that coming out as well and much more content to come. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to Rodder's Garage. I'll see you guys next time.